everyone welcome back to knit and spin with brie i am brie like the cheese and just welcome to all the new people i am super excited that i have quite a few viewers now um thank you so much laura from the knitting pickle for shouting me out in her latest episode I was bright red while I was watching it. My kids were just like, what's going on, mom? Why are you so red? Why are you? And I was just so happy. Um, and Laura, you're my people too. In fact, I'm just gonna jump right in to what I've been knitting on. Uh, she just released her sock pattern, um, the Cornicet socks, and she released it today. I went over to Ravelry and I purchased it and started knitting it today. And I'm this far. <laughs> I'm doing the shorty version, but I don't do socks. Um, but I wanted to support her and her pattern is super cute and color work for me is very popcorn knitting or potato chip knitting. I just have to get to the next section. I have to go through it. So I am almost done with the first one already. It was so much fun to knit. There are several mistakes because I didn't read the pattern with my glasses on when I was reading the chart. So there's some mistakes in here. And then I messed up the toe a little bit. I think I might have to tink back a little for the toe, but I love it. It's gonna be super nice. The purple is my own hand dyed yarn. Um, it's just an MCN base. I only had two skeins of it when I dyed it, so it's not in my shop or anything, but super soft and I love it. And then this is just excess from a sweater that I made for my aunt, but aren't they, isn't it just so cute? Minus the mistakes. Thank you, Laura. I will probably be making several pairs of these. Beautiful pattern. The way it's written is just perfect, very easy and simple to understand. Yeah, very nice. All right, some of the other things I've been working on is my shawl for my best friend, Hannah. I'm kind of doing this a little backwards. I normally start with finished objects then go into works in progress, but I had to mention the corner set socks because they're so, so cute. So I'll just finish with my works in progress and then go on to FOs. I finished the first half of, is this, yeah, of the shawl for my friend Hannah, made in all of my own hand dyed yarn. What's this? What's his name again? Oh no, I put the pattern up over there. I think maybe I have it written down. This is sad. I'll put it in the show notes. I don't know why I'm freaking out about it, but Oh, it's dreaming in a field of wildflowers. Wow. I've only said it a million times, but I finished one side. It looks really great. It's going to block out super nice. And then I've started the other side, um, lace portion right here. Another recap of the colorways is B and B sandwich on the top pinky purple one. And then that one time at karaoke is the second one, which is like a blend of 
the, these two colors together, the blues and the pinks. And then the one at the bottom here is just one of those days. I really love this shawl. It's super easy, but I I don't know what's going on with me. I've just been like n casting on a bunch of stuff. When I say a bunch, I mean the, the socks and cardigans and things, but yeah, the, that's pretty much the only thing knitting wise I have working on right now. So I will transition over into my FOs. You might have seen it. It's just right here. This is Sunray from Jennifer Stein Gas or Knit Love Wool. This sweater I I told you guys last time that I was going to finish it over the weekend, and I did not finish it over the weekend. I finished it on Monday, but it's all done, and this is how much yarn I have left from my hand spun that I spun for the sweater. Definite yarn chicken. I kept thinking the sleeves were going to be too short, but my mom is shorter than me significantly, and her arms are shorter, so... But I put it on myself and the sleeves are actually a good length. Um, and I still had this much left. So those will just be little mini skeins of whatever I feel like putting in them next. The yarn is my complete hand spun yarn from Rockstar Alpacas, which is my mom's farm, Alpaca farm. And it's so soft. I love all the color work. I love how the sleeves work too, because there's no ribbing on the end of the sleeve cuff. It's a rolled over hemline. Super nice. And I can't wait to give it to her because she's so excited about it. Um, another finished object is my weaving project that I was telling you guys about last time and I did a little weaving video and I posted that of my process from start to finish but yeah I finished it and I'm actually now thinking that I do want to make project bags with it I think that would be really cool I don't really have that many project bags um, mostly because I have so much fabric that I could probably make my own project bags if I really wanted to. The only thing is I do not have space for a sewing machine at my house. At my dad's house, there's so much space and that's where most of my sewing equipment and stuff is. But, yeah probably some project bags in the future. May put some in my Etsy shop. We shall see. This is also made out of my all of my complete hand spun yarns. It's the fiber content is mostly a camel silk blend. It's really drapey, really soft. Um, very pleased with it. Okay. Anything else that I finished? Um, I did finish actually spinning up some more alpaca yarn. I finished spinning this. Oops. Um, it's probably around DK weight. This is the little tag um, that came with the fiber. It's the fibers from a friend of my mom's at 101 Alpaca Ranch, Dennis and Vicky. Um, Vicky's amazing. And this is her alpaca Adeline. And it was 14 ounces of pin drafted robing of her white alpaca. It's really soft and I love it. I 
I don't know if I'm gonna put it in the shop as one of my hand spun yarns to sell or make a project with it. Or I might give it to Vicky and for her to use in a project. We'll see. It was really fun to spin. Super easy, especially with pin drafted rovings, which I won't get too in depth with um, spinning things because it's it's another language on top of knitting. If you're not a spinner and I go on about spinning fibers and stuff, it gets, there's a lot of verbiage that goes with it and can be very confusing at times. But yeah, I finished that and I absolutely love it. What else? I guess I could go into, I feel like I'm kind of going a little too fast, but I could go into what I'm wearing, which kind of started it all in 2020 before, you know, COVID hit. Um, I went to Stitches West with um, my mother-in-law, who I call my mom all the time. So again, if I say my mom, I'm meaning my mother-in-law my mom passed away this past year. Um, so when I talk about mom, or I say mom, I mean uh, my mother-in-law. We're very, very close. She, I went with her to Stitches West last year in um, February of 2020. And my mind was blown with all of the yarn I, oh my God. And it really got me into just kind of doing the crafting thing again. And I bought this kit from, oh, I don't remember the booth that I got it at. Cause I think it was the, the beading people instead of the actual, like the name of the yarn brand or the pattern um, that I used. But I bought a kit and this is all crocheted. And this was the first shawl I ever made, but it's all completely hand beaded as well. It's got like nice little pearl beads. It's probably really hard to see uh, but the yarn is a 50-50 of camel silk from White Birch Yarns. And the pattern is, one moment, I did write it down. Summer of Love Shawl by Mary Beth Temple. Yeah, made with White Birch Fiber Arts Camel Silk Fingering. And this skein came in like 1400 yard cake and I still have like a little bitty bitty ball um, left after finishing this. It's so soft it got me into camel silk blends as you can see from my weaving project it's a camel silk blend and also in my shop I have camel silk blend hand spun yarn as well. Anyway, I didn't really know how to wear it because I've never really worn a shawl, but I guess you kind of just throw it on. And if it works, it works. There. All right. What else do I have to talk about? The elephant in the room, which is my spinning wheel here. This is my Ashford E-Spinner 3. And I have some pretty merino blend um, of like blues that I am spinning up and I really like how it's going so far. I am debating whether to do a three ply or just a two ply. I usually just do two ply because it's easiest. 
and fast. But that is what is going on my spinning wheel currently. I'm kind of hopping around. I don't like how I'm jumping from subject to subject here, but we're just gonna go with it because I feel a little kind of flustered in the moment. What else? What else here? I did want to kind of explain how my Etsy shop is laid out. So Etsy charges you per listing and I can I have a lot more items on there than just the 22 listings that it says. I put multiple listings in one listing. So I don't have like one colorway of yarn in one listing, like per listing. I put multiple colorways um, and multiple skeins in one listing. So you just scroll through all the pictures and if you see something like you, you buy it that way, that way it kind of saves space and it doesn't look too overwhelming when you go to my Etsy store, Doodlebug Yarn Shop on Etsy. I think that maybe people were getting confused about how I was posting my listings and maybe they were thinking, oh, well, there's, there's not that much here or um, the thumbnail images for the listing were not like speaking to them. Go through all the pictures on the listings for the yarn, depending on what weight of yarn you're looking for. There are multiple colorways and um, multiple skeins. And all of this is there. Um, I also did a little update on my roving that I have, my hand dyed roving that I have on my Etsy store as well. There is now a little option on the side that says spin it for me. If you're not a spinner, but you like how the colorways are with mm, the roving, you're like, oh, that'd be really cool as a yarn, but I'm not a spinner. I can spin it for you. And you would just press that little option and what weight of yarn you would like. There's also an option all the way at the bottom that says, no, I can spin it myself. And then it'll go to the regular price of the just the roving without the extra cost of me spinning it. I thought that was that would be kind of a cool little option if someone really liked the colors of a roving but they weren't really a spinner or they weren't in spinning yet and they wanted to have it spun up for them. I can do that. Oh goodness. This is really short. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm rushing. I don't need to rush. Okay, well, I think that's it for my crafting and my little updates with my shop and things that have been going on this week. So I'm going to go into a Kind of a newer segment you don't have to say for this one because it's more of like just my personal life um but family if you want to know what's going on you can stay and watch i me and my husband are going to utah we are flying out there on um, friday this week and we're super excited we're going to be looking at housing um, to move out there next year. I'm really excited. We currently live in a very small two bedroom apartment in San Jose, California. And apartment life with two kids is really hard. Uh, we don't know any of our neighbors. Our neighbors don't like us. 
and be, mostly because our kids stomp around, we live on the second floor, they're yelling and screaming all the time, we don't have like a space for them to really run around, we don't live too close to an area where we can walk to a park um, so they can get their energy out. So our living situation here is like, it's really sad and it's been really getting to me emotionally. Um, but this trip has really brightened my spirits of moving forward with our lives, taking the next step, um, getting a space where I can have space for my crafting business, and then my husband can have space for his ridiculous Lego habits, and my kids can have space to play. So that's what's going on with me personally. Yeah, I am, again, very happy to have all of the new subscribers. Thank you so much. Um, I've also reached out to some other podcasters, um, just wanting to be kind of more incorporated with everyone. And who knew that all you had to do was ask to be someone's friend. And the fiber arts community is just so welcoming all the time. And there's no clickiness, there's no, we won't accept you because you're not cool enough or whatever. It's, everyone's very welcoming Everyone wants to make sure that you feel a part of the gang and it just, it fills me up because I don't have um, that in terms of close friends that are into the same things that I am um, crafting wise. I do have many best friends, but they're their eyes glaze over when I start talking about knitting or spinning or my craft. Um, and like I said in my previous episode, knitting is a second language, which I know. And you talk to a non-knitter about knitting, goes over their head. <laughs> yeah. So thank you so much um, to Laura at the Knitting Pickle um, podcast for giving that, giving me that lovely shout out in her podcast. And if anyone has not seen her podcast, check it out. It is awesome. Also, check out her pattern. Um, it's on Ravelry. The Corn Set Socks by Penrose Knits my printer really sucks so that's why it looks all funky but it's an amazing sock pattern like i said i blew through the first one in a few hours i love it okay well i think that's pretty much all i have this time i think that was only like 15 minutes of talking yeah. I hope to see you guys next week. I will hopefully have some sort of spinning, more spinning content in terms of maybe some tutorial-ish things um, coming up here. But otherwise, I will see you guys next week.